Reading with Joan. Hi. Hi, kids. It says. It's Reading with Joan story time. Hello. Okay. Okay. Did you hear? Oh, the bird says it's time for us to enjoy a fun time of sharing our stories. Welcome. I'm June, your host for today. We have a special story for you. Reading with June. We have an announcement. Are you ready for this? Come along. Let's go. Our kids creative contest. And what is this about? It's a submission of short stories, our art, songwriting, poems, science, herbs. If you have anything creative, you can submit to us. Remember, you have a chance of winning a £50 grand prize. Just send your submission to john at infohopme.com. The deadline is April 27, 2020. The theme of the contest is Who Am I? You could actually write something that is related to all the things that we are doing in the program. But whatever, whichever way you choose, the contest, the theme of the contest is Who Am I? So we would love you to make your submission to us as soon as possible. Kids out there, remember, make your submission between now and April 27th. Let's creep into the story. What are you saying? Let's just have a little short break and then we'll be back. Hi kids. <laughs> we are back. Ah, what are we going to read today? Ah, can you remember the story we've been reading? We are almost getting to the end. In fact, I think today, is it the last story? Let's find out. All right, so today's story is once again, our book we've been reading, A Nice Story, The Part of Wisdom by Adowa and Baba. So today's story we are reading, Anansi and the Birds. What has he done again? What has Anansi done again? Today's story is Anansi and the Birds. Let's find out what he has done today again, shall we? Let's go on. So, how? Oh, it's interesting to always see the picture of the story before we go on. Can we look at the picture? Kids, can you draw a picture for me that looks like this with Anansi flying down the sky? What is happening? here what has he done Anansi must have done something very terrible so let's find out what Anansi did as we read the story one evening just as the sun set Anansi gathered his children around the fire and told them stories about his exploits as the nights won on his tales became longer and taller taller and taller as he literally prickled them with salt and pepper at last unable to stand it any longer his wife exclaimed it is a wonder that you have not yet flown with the birds. And Anansi replied, Ha! That I have not yet done. However, if the birds can do it, and even the lonely house fly, then I, Anansi, no doubt can fly. And with that, he bid his children good night and retired to plan for his next adventure. For the next few days, Anansi was unusually nice to the sparrows and the crowd crops that flew about. He was even nice to the chicken and the dog that snacked for food, that scratched for food. He would hand them mussels and chat to them. He never asked 18 of them, except a feather, and a feather there, and a feather here. Then he stuck the feather together with rubber and tied a fashion to a pair of wings. And tied to fashion a pair of wings. For the next week, he practiced flying at night when no one was watching except an old owl who hunted at night. Can you see the picture of an owl? What is Anansi up to? Kids, can you guess? Let's find out. Anansi, she hooted. The skies are for birds. It takes more than wings to be a creature of the sky. Shut up, old bats, retorted Anansi. Go to bed 
if there is nothing to hunt and he went on practicing and making adjustments to his wings one day as the birds were planning for flight an answer approached them and asked if he could come along why of course said crow if you can fly we may attain the feast of the birds on the mountains by a week then he and all the birds started crowing aloud, amused by Anansi's request. Imagine their surprise when Anansi produced his wings and started to fly. First they hoop on his first right leg, then a jump and a ski and a mop. And there was Anansi flying with the best of the lot. Now, the birds were not very happy about it, but Croak had spoken and had to keep his words. Up the flew, higher and higher and higher above the clouds, up where the air was thinner and flying much harder and still Anansi kept up with the birds. And then at last, there we were on the mountains where the birds was ready, were ready to feast. Anansi couldn't believe his eyes. So partially was he too delighted. So partially was he too delicious food that he ate and ate, forgetting entirely he was a guest. He shoved and quarreled with all the birds about meat and bones and leaves and yam and made a nuisance of himself. Soon he was so full that he fell asleep. One by one, each bird took the feathers they had given him. And while he was still asleep, they stole away in the silence of the evening, leaving Cook, who prodded Anansi awake. See you down below. See you down below, friend Anansi, said Cook. Oh, please, said Anansi, when he realized he had hardly any feather left. Could you help me get down? Of course, said Cook. Pretend not to understand and with that he pushed Anansi up the mountain Whee! screaming Anansi as he huddled down the sky on top speed oh what the world scream the hearing sound from the darkened sky the skies are for birds I told you so it take more than wings to be the creature of the sky sang the owl who was out hunting help screamed Anansi Button hutch hutched the out. For out of Anansi's belly came fine silk from all the food he has eaten at the feast of a bird. And the how holding, taking hold of a thread, hung them securely to the branch of a tree, breaking Anansi's fall to a certain doom. And as he healed from the branch of a tree, Anansi wisely considered the owl's advice. No more flying for me, he said. Instead, he learned to spin fancy ways so that he would never fall again. <laughs> did you like the story, kids? Did you enjoy it like I did? I did enjoy story today. <laughs> Can you tell me what to learn from it? We'll come back and we'll discuss the lessons for today. Okay. All right, all right. What lessons did you learn? Oh, the bird is still talking. Yes. What lessons did you learn? I learned a very important lesson today. The lessons we learned today is don't try and be what you're not. Don't try and be what you're not. Anansi was not a bird. He was Anansi the spider. But he tried to be a bird. Not only did he do that, he tricked others in the process of it. And he was also impolite. He wanted all the food for himself. He was greedy. So, a few lessons. Be yourself. Don't be other people. Don't trick other people to become them. And then, learn to be polite and don't be greedy. Because at the end of the day, if Anansi was not greedy, maybe the birds wouldn't have taken their feathers. But he was very greedy. And I'm really happy the owl was out to help him. If not, he would have died. But he learned his lesson to stay where he belongs. Make fancy webs. Kids, are you learning the lesson? Are you putting it to heart? Are you practicing it? Because every lesson learned should be lessons that are acted upon. Hi, it's Little J. Today I'm reading Black and British, the early Georgian. Last time, when BJ forgot her book, she found it. 
but now I remember where exactly I put it. Today we're reading the early Georgians who lived from 1714 to 1760. In the early 18th century, the Hanoverian kings came to the throne. By then, British colonies in North America and on the islands of the West Indies were making huge fortunes for the rich families to own plantations there. And those plantations were grown sugar, cotton, tobacco, and other products that would only grow in warm and sunny parts of the world. The people who did the work of planting and harvesting food crops enslaved black people who were brought from Africa in slave ships. No. Thousands died on the plantations where they were overworked, Neglect. neglected, not given enough food and beaten. The same ship that carries the slaves to the colony were later filled with sugar and other crops and sailed back to Britain. The captain of the slave ship were able to make extra money by, by bringing one or two and slave black, black people back to Britain with them on the last leg of their journey. These enslaved people were brought, brought to my rich families who made them work for them as servants. That's not good. When they were no longer wanted, they were advertised for sale in the news. Here are some of those advertisements. To be sold. A negro servant about 17 years of age ran on the gold craft from which place he was for five years old. He is about five foot four inches high, well made and very big. He speaks English well and understands the business of a family any person wanting such a surgeon may be further informed by applying to the Universal Register Office, offering the ceaseless group in the strand. To be sold, a healthy Negro slave named Prince, 17 years of age, 5 feet 10 inches high, and extremely well groomed, inquired of Joshua Springer in Street Stephens Lane. We will never know how many black people were brought to Britain in those years, but we can learn more about them through art because in hundreds of paintings from the Georgian period, you can see the faces of black people who were brought to Britain. You can find them in paintings by famous artists like Joshua Reynolds, Jonan, Daphne and William Hogarth, especially in portraits. The rich have portraits painted so that they could show off their wealth. Well, in fine clothes, jewelry, horses and beautiful houses. Those who owned enslaved black people sometimes included them in their portraits, having them sitting or standing alongside them. They did this because owning enslaved black people is fashionable. They are keen to show off their human property. What we can tell from these portraits and from other quotes is that many of the black people brought to Britain as slaves were very young. Most of them were young boys. One enslaved boy named Africanus, who was made to work for Charles William Howard. The seventh Earl Suffolk was just 18 when he died in 1720. His grave is a churchyard in Bristol, but they were less valuable than fear of them were brought to Britain by slave ship captains. To make these enslaved children appear even even more fashionable, they dressed in expensive and colourful uniforms of metal buttons and neat jackets which we can see in Portugal. Because these black people were the property of the rich people who paid for the clothes to be painted, they were usually placed in the margins of the painting, sometimes pushed up against the frame. They were also painted looking at the rich Owners. and sometimes holding it, exotic fruit from Africa or Asia, monkeys, parrots, or rare birds. There is another place where we can learn about the life of the enslaved people in Georgian Britain, as they long to be free, and because many were treated badly by the rich people who owned them. Some attempts at 
to escape. As enslaved black people were very valuable, owners would pay for advertisements to be put in the newspapers, offering rewards for their recapture. These were known as hue and cry advertisements, and they advertisement, and they didn't tell us how old the enslaved people were, what they looked like, whether they were boys or men, girls or women, and they described the colorful hue uniforms they were made to wear. Here are some of those advertisements. Below, the 5th of February, 1760, from John Stone. Yes, in front of Chicken Man, and a natural surface. Named Blagos, 21 years of age, about 5, about five feet 6 inches high. One slender groom, marked with a long scar down the middle of his forehead and speaks English very well. Or when he went off, a light colored lively coat and red boots with white metal dress often did coats with a red turned down collar, red button holes, red lining and, and flat sleeves, had on likewise a black velvet cap with a silver band, band or else a silver lace hat and an old pair of leather breeches. Whoever secures the said set negro and gives notice of it to John Stone, he has secured as her so that he may be brought back again, will be shockingly rewarded for their trouble. But any person content sooner arguing with the sad black will be prosecuted Run away from his master on the second infant, David Marat, a black about 17 years of age, with short woolly hair. He had on a white cloth livery, wounded of boots, and Prince's metal buttons, with the turban from his head. He has a trumpet, whoever secures him and brings him to Edward Talbot. Yes, by Ingrid, near Soho, shall have five. Reward. He looked for Mr. Samuel Dewey Clark, merchant at Bristol, and come to London, a negro man, about 17 or 18 years old, wife he's five or six inches high. Had on when he left Bristol, a brown livery coat lined with red red buttonholes and a collar red waistcoat, a pair of gold leather breeches and peace at the knees, a black leather cap, and a pair of black red stockings. And so was the name of John, if he should offer to see what ship himself as a sea man, aboard any ship by directing the line to the Jamaica Coffee House, where Captain William Tom Tomlinson or to Mr. Joseph Malgelborn in Wood Street, she bought cheap side, whatever events and walking distance, walking to that nebula shall be repaid with signs and six feet. These enslaved black people were also given classical names such as Caesar, Scipio, and Pompey. They were not allowed to use their real African names. Some had been born on plantations in the British colony and were brought to Britain by plantations in it rather than slave ship. As well as expensive and fashionable uniforms, some enslaved people in Georgia and Britain were forced to wear slave collars. These strips of metal were attached around their necks and padlocks so that they could not be removed. They were used to make it clear to everyone that the black person wearing, wearing them was a slave and someone. Some slave colors had the entitles of the name or the name of the slave owner engraved into them. Visitors from abroad who came to London in those years sometimes wrote letters home describing the numbers of, of enslaved black people they saw working for the rich. Brenda Rossman to San decided she wanted to buy black slaves to work as servants in her court. He sent her agents to London. There they were instructed to buy a number of the finest best made black boys in order to be sent to Petersburg as attendants on her Russian mag majesty. The true number of black people living in Britain in the Georgian period is a mystery that historians will never be able to solve. What we do know is that not all black people were enslaved. There were also three black people, some of whom were 
one a slave, you have to flee. The other escaped slaves who lived in fear of being kidnapped by slave catchers and sent to the plantation in Jamaica or Barbados. Barbados. Even three black people were at risk of being kidnapped and sent to work as slaves in the West Indies. Among the three black population were black slavers. We have we know because we have the record of the ship that fought in big naval battle, the Battle of Trafalgar in eighteen oh five. On the ships that that the British Admiral Horatio Nelson led into battle against the French and the Spanish at Trafalgar. Right. 18 men that had been born in Africa and another 123 who were from the West Indies. There was an African sailor and six sailors from the islands of the West Indies serving on Nelson's flagship. HMS Victory. Among the Africans of Trafalgar were George Brown, who had been born in Guna in Africa and was just 13 at the time of battle, and George Am Ambrian. He was 27 years old and has also been born in Junia. Another African called John Everham served on board HMS Senior. He had been born in Africa in Calabar, which is in what is today Nigeria. The rule of what? The black sailors who remembered in the years after the battle. In the base of, at the base of Nelson's called Column and Trafford Guard there are in London are four huge bronze panels. One of them, called the Death of Nelson, shows the moment just after Admiral Nelson had been shot by his French knife. Aside Nelford, Nelson and the other officers is a black sailor holding a mask. I hope you enjoyed the story about the early Georgians today. I learned that I learned about the early Georgians and how they got enslaved African African boys, even girls and women and men who were like who were very young and they died very young. And I also learned that only the rich people could buy them because they were rich. So, thank you for joining us and reading us Joe. Bye! And so, on this note, we'll say, see you next time on Reading with June. Bye!